That sounds terrifying. Three, two, one. <laughs> Let's go. That was perfect. We did it. We did it. Let's go. This is my second video on building a DIY version of the spin launch concept. The full size spin launch is meant to throw rockets into space. That seemed like an awful lot to tackle though. So I'm just trying to do this on a small scale to see if it's even possible. Last video, we built the arm and did a few initial tests. However, I quickly ran into some issues. As soon as the rocket was released from the arm, it continued to rotate in the air, which caused it to tumble, which was really not good. When I was testing it, I thought this had to do something with the CG of the rocket. However, I was very wrong. This problem is literally as simple as just a conservation of angular momentum issue. As the arm spins at 400 RPM, the rocket is also spinning at 400 RPM. And when you release it, if you don't counteract that rotation with a moment, it just continues to rotate. Duh. I'm still kicking myself for not realizing that. So yeah, that was very accurately pointed out by the comments. And there were actually a lot of good suggestions on how to fix it. I started simple trying to fix this tumbling issue by printing a cantilevered support beam that interfaces with the back of the rocket. This is actually a pretty big part, so I printed it on my Bamboo Lab H2D, and it turned out fantastic. This was using their glass fiber filled ABS filament, which makes these parts really durable and strong. I started off with this cantilevered arm design because it was my simplest idea for how to fix the spin. All it needs is a carbon rod epoxied into the end of the printed part, and then it's ready to be mounted to the existing spin launch arm with just a couple bolts. The part it interfaces with is a small piece in the bottom of the rocket which has an opened end slot in it. My thought is the pin on the arm in this slot is gonna act sort of like the fingers of a pitcher as he throws a baseball. And by changing the length of this slot, we can adjust how long that pin stays in contact with the bottom of the rocket. I printed out a couple different versions with different lengths of the slot, and I just used PLA for this on my P1S printer. In my head, this feels like this should fix the spin, but there's really only one way to find out, and that's test it. Now, going out to the big field every time it would be a lot of work. So instead, I developed a pretty sketchy testing setup in my garage. Using a couple old doors that I had, as well as some foam, I kind of blocked off every direction that the rocket could go. So we should be ready to give this thing a try. Since I'm doing this in my garage, I started off nice and slow, put on my safety squints, and then press the release button. In the slow-mo footage, you can actually see that this new setup gives the rocket a good fling after release. However, it's actually a little too much and the rocket starts spinning in the opposite direction. To fix this, I did a bunch of different tests at different speeds and different slot heights. And I quickly realized that this method of counteracting the spin was pretty unreliable. Every single one of them looked slightly different when it released, and almost all of them still had a decent amount of spin. However, I did get a few good releases, which was really nice to see. But at the end of the day, I think I need to do a whole new design of the release mechanism. For the new release mechanism, I started off by creating a 3D model in Onshape. This design has two sets of claws, and the idea is they open sequentially, so it imparts a torque onto the rocket as it releases. This was actually an idea from the comments section. The claws and the spacer bars are machined out of quarter inch aluminum on my CNC router. The spacer bars specifically need to be machined with very tight tolerances because they prevent the claws from opening too early. So I was really happy to see that the parts came out within about two thousandths of an inch of my design, which is pretty good. The rest of the parts are 3D printed, and this is where I really put my Bamboo Lab printers to work. And they're also the sponsor of this video. On the H2D, I printed out the base plate of this mechanism out of glass fiber filled ABS. This stuff is quickly becoming one of my favorite materials to print with. It creates parts that just feel really tough. And then the top plate was printed out of Bamboo Lab's carbon fiber filled nylon. This stuff is a great way to make really strong and tough parts. I really like Bamboo Lab's printers and materials because they have really elevated the hobby over the last couple years. Getting really good parts is now as easy as just a couple clicks. Recently, I've been using my H2D printer and its dual nozzles to do a lot of multi-material prints. I used it to print the spacer bar connector for this project, and I used this carbon fiber filled PEDG for the main body, and then I used some white PLA in the other nozzle to add in lettering, which makes this really professional looking print. If you're interested in getting into 3D printing or just looking for an upgrade, you can check out Bamboo Labs printers using the link in the description below. With all the printed and machined parts made, it was time to see if this thing was actually gonna to go together. 
which sometimes things don't. But to my surprise, all these parts fit together really well. And I could finally see if this mechanism worked like I thought it would. As the spacer bars retract together, the bottom one is longer than the top one. So the top claws release while the bottom claws are still held closed. As the spacer bars continue to retract, the bottom claws finally release and the rocket is free from the arm. This differential release mechanism is what should counteract the angular momentum of the rocket. And since I'm not sure exactly how much longer the bottom bar needs to be than the top bar, I made it adjustable with a long slot and these graduation marks, which allow me to measure it in the field. This type of mechanism is definitely not a new idea, and it's actually very similar to how a quick release in archery works. However, instead of releasing a bowstring, it's releasing the forward and aft mounts on a rocket. With this whole mechanism assembled, we should be able to put it back into the sketchy garage testing setup and see how it works. You'll also notice I added an LED strip to the arm. This gives me some feedback about how fast the arm is spinning, but to be honest, I didn't really use it that much, so just kind of ignore it. But it looks cool though. So yeah, this first test didn't go that great. First off, the rocket still spun just as much. And then to make matters worse, as the rocket was falling back down, it got absolutely obliterated by the arm. As I looked back at the footage, I realized the mechanism was just opening way too fast. Luckily, slowing this down is actually pretty easy. All I need to do is put a flow restrictor on the solenoid valve. So I just printed those up really quickly out of PLA, and they screw into the inlet and exhaust port of the valve. Okay, so with that changed, I tested again and finally saw some success. Just to make sure this wasn't a fluke, I ran the test again and it also worked. At this point, I was finally feeling confident in the release mechanism, but the arm was still way out of balance. So I printed up this little balancing jig on the H2D. This thing is literally just two 3D printed pieces that get some bearings attached. When this little jig is attached to the arm, it basically turns it into a seesaw. And then I just added weight to either side to balance it out. However, I found that with all the modifications, all I needed to do was add the plate back onto the arm and everything was pretty balanced. So with both the problems from the first video fixed, we can go give this thing a real test out in the big field. Right, spin launch, we're back. Round two of testing here. Last video, we uh, let go of a rocket and it looked good except for almost everything about it. Uh, so after the rocket got released, it would start tumbling and that's not good uh, and I think I fixed that with this round two. We've done some of the sketchy garage testing. And now that we're out in the middle of nowhere with nothing around to hurt, we're going to give this thing a real test and uh, see what it can do. Oh God, <sighs> I gotta stop making heavy stuff. Let's see if these modifications I made actually fix all the problems we had last time. Take this little collar off of here, slide the arm on. I got the new rockets printed. To load them, you just pull this mechanism back. This is the V2 mechanism, of course. It fixes the tumbling issue. And then this gets installed here. And it's a little tricky, but this should just go right up like that. Now it's locked in there. There she is, locked in. All right, for all these tests, I'm doing it at about 90 PSI. Let's see what this thing can do. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! That didn't work. What the heck? 
When I saw this first launch not work, I was a little disappointed. I thought maybe I'd just gotten lucky in the garage while I was testing, and now the mechanism woes were back. But after a little bit closer inspection, I found something. Oh. 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 I'm an idiot. I found the problem. All right, so this is my adjustable mechanism here, all right? You can see there's like graduation marks, and this kind of marks, tells you like how far inserted that pin is. Before transporting it here and setting this all up, this line like right here was even with this green piece. But then during the whole transport situation or while I set it up, this thing shifted. So all I gotta do is shift this back and then we'll retry and that should fix this problem. I'm an idiot. Here, I was blaming my design. This thing's perfect, perfect. It's only flaw is it was too adjustable and a little janky, but we won't worry about that. All right, all we gotta do, loosen these bolts and then slide this up like that. Tighten it down. So now the back will release sooner? Correct. No, the back will take longer to release. That's what this back releasing slightly after the other one. See, this one's already released, this one's not. As you slide it down, boom, this one releases. That's what actually counteracts the spinning. So, we should be good now. Should hopefully go for a similar speed here, but um, should be a straight up launch. Dude, that was awesome. That was perfect. Maybe we released a little, like slightly early, but it's only probably, I don't know, 30 feet. That was easily the best launch yet. All right, faster, faster. Now all you gotta do is scale it from going like, you know, 60 miles an hour to going like 17,000 miles an hour and it'll go to space. No problem. All right, so that's adjusted. We can now send this thing up to max speed, see what happens. I will say it's a lot less scary now that it's sort of balanced. Last time when I got it up to these speeds, it was wobbling all over the place. Would not recommend. But this time, it seems pretty controlled. Now as I pushed the arm faster and faster, I definitely found some other issues, such as one time it just didn't release until I started slowing down. Oh no, it didn't release. Oh! literally got turned into like mulch. Well, that wasn't good. Or for another test, it was just 180 degrees off for some reason. So there was definitely some tweaking and reviewing footage and making small adjustments to the software, all of which slowly helped. The first really good launch was still at a little bit of an angle, but it was dead straight. Spin, launch, spin, launch. Dude, I'm so happy with how this thing's working. Way better than last time. The last time, as, as the comments let me know, was just a catastrophe, a real catastrophe. I think all this is some proof that it's a cool idea that kind of works. Look at that. It's our first one that's actually stuck in the ground. Ching. Got him. So we are 85 yards away from the actual launcher and it went pretty high in the air as well, so. That's not terrible. Now this was cool to see, but it was not the perfect launch I wanted. So I set everything up again, and I finally got the perfect launch. Oh! Look how high that went. <laughs> Let's go! That was perfect. We did it. We did it. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what success looks like. That's awesome. Got him. Dude, that went really high. 
If you go frame by frame in the slow-mo, you can see the release mechanism is working perfectly. The first hook releases, and then the arm travels another maybe 10 degrees, and then the rear hook releases. This counteracted all the angular momentum of the rocket, making it fly almost perfectly straight. Doing some quick math afterwards, we can see that the arm was rotating at 438 RPM. That means the rocket at release was going about 80 miles an hour. Using the time that the rocket was in the air, as well as some basic assumptions, we can tell the rocket went to about 215 feet in altitude, which I was actually really impressed with. It feels so good when a design like this all comes together and finally works. To get anything to go higher, we need to either add weight to the rocket, which gets a little scary when things become unbalanced, or we need to spin even faster. Also scary. So we'll see about that. All right, well, this thing worked pretty well. The uh, changes we made to the mechanism definitely worked well. We had several launches where it was like perfectly straight, which was awesome. However, there's still some issues on the timing. Um, a lot of that's just due to variability in this whole release mechanism. The rocket's experiencing like 140 Gs when it gets released. So there's a lot of force in the system. And that just creates, you know, some variability when a lot of things are 3D printed and things like that. But overall, this thing did really, really well. Definitely a huge improvement from last video. So the question is, where do we go from here? Do we just spin it faster and faster, improve the mechanism even more, and get this thing to just launch it as high as possible? Or do we look at something else? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.